I want to talk about a story that occurs in the Old Testament and it is a very weird story and a lot of people really misunderstand it. The reason people misunderstand it is because they take it out of context. Now, when we talk about taking a verse out of context or a passage out of context, what that means is that you can't just read one single verse. You have to read what is happening around that verse. If you just read one single verse, you might think you understand it, but it might actually mean the opposite of what it seems to say if you read it in context. Sometimes it might make no sense at all, but then when you read the context, it starts to make sense. And that's something that we are going to talk about today is this story that happens in 2 Samuel, it's also recorded in 1 Chronicles, that doesn't really make sense to most people when you first read it. So you know, the reason the story is in both 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles is because those books are history books of the nation of Israel uh, that kind of are recording the same time period, so some of the stories overlap, and this is one of them. It's in both 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. The story is found in 2 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles 21. I recommend that you pause this video and go read those chapters. It's the entire chapter for both occurrences. Go and read that and then you can come back here and we'll talk about it. Here is what the story basically says. In those chapters, David, the king of Israel, he was a very good king, the best king Israel ever had. David decides to count the people of Israel. He does a census to see how many people there are. After he does this, God is angry and judges the people and 70,000 people die. And we read this and we're like, what is happening? And here's the thing. That is a story I have heard so many people explain. They say David was being proud. He was trusting his military. Even though he had seen God win all these battles for him, David wanted to see how many people he had so he knew how strong his military was. And so God judged him and the nation because of it. But the problem with that explanation is that it is absolutely nowhere in the Bible. That is something that someone at some point just made up. And then it's just been passed around to the point where a lot of people think that that is the actual explanation. They think that that's what happened, but that's not what happened. That's not the explanation. The only way you can understand that story is to understand the context of the story. However, even if you go and you read all the surrounding chapters, you're still not going to understand the context. Because there's something about the Bible, when we talk about reading it in context, a lot of people really don't understand how to read the Bible in context. They think if you just read the surrounding verses, you have the context. Maybe if you read the surrounding chapters, you have the context. Some would say you have to read the entire book to have the context. Now, I recommend that, absolutely. But here's the thing, the context of the Bible is all of the Bible. You can't just read some of it. If you just read some of it, you're going to misunderstand stuff. And that's very common in the church. People misunderstand a lot of stuff because they don't really know what the Bible says. The context of this story is not found in 2 Samuel. It's not found in 1 Chronicles. It's found in the book of Exodus. Because Israel was a nation established by God and God wrote the law. Ultimately, God was their king. And God wrote the law and said, if you do these things, you will be blessed. And if you do these things, you will be cursed. Part of that law in Exodus 30 explains what happened in the story. The Lord said to Moses, when you count the people of Israel, every person must buy back his life from the Lord so that no plague will happen to the people when you number them. Every person who is counted must pay half a shekel. This is set by using one half of the holy place measure, which weighs two fifths of an ounce. This amount is a gift to the Lord. Every person who is counted and is 20 years old or older must give this amount to the Lord. A rich person must not give more than a half shekel and a poor person must not give less. You are paying this to the Lord to buy back your lives. Gather from the people of Israel this money paid to buy back their lives and spend it on things for the work in the meeting tent. 
This payment will remind the Lord that the Israelites' lives have been bought back. So here in the law, God said, when you count the people, every person must buy back his life from the Lord so that the Lord does not send a plague. That is the explanation for the story in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. They counted the people and God sent a plague. Why did God send a plague? Because they are supposed to buy back their lives from the Lord. This was a way for God to give money to those who were working in the meeting tent. That's where God met with the people. There was a cost to that, and it's a way for God to give them the money they need. And it's also a reminder that the Israelites' lives have been bought back. That word bought back is ransomed or redeemed. So whether or not we understand why God gave this particular law is a different question. But that story has an explanation found in Scripture. You don't need to just make one up. You should never just make one up. That's not the right way to read scripture. And if someone is coming to you and just teaching something and telling you this is why it happened, you should always ask them, where are you getting that from in scripture? Because a lot of times people really do just make stuff up and they teach it as fact. Ultimately, you should be familiar enough with scripture to understand why it says different things. And when you're reading through it, you'll start to connect these dots. But the whole of Scripture is the context of Scripture. Whatever you're reading, ultimately, you will understand it better if you know what Scripture says as a whole. If you understand what God wants, what pleases Him, what God cares about, if you understand these things, then you're going to understand a lot. But the only way you can understand those things is if you are reading the Bible a lot. <laughs> if you're reading it over and over again, and not just for the sake of going through a Bible reading plan, but actually reading it because you want to learn what it says. Reading it and absorbing it. Because it's easy to just read the Bible over and over again and forget everything it says because we don't actually care. But do you read the Bible to study it and learn it and get it to the point where you know what it says? you're familiar with it. That's when you can start connecting dots that cross entire books. The only way to understand the story in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles is to understand what the law says in Exodus. And so you need to be familiar with it. You need to know what the Bible is saying as a whole, and you need to read it enough to be able to spot these sort of things. And that is the context. That's my point for this video. The context of the Bible is not just the surrounding verses and surrounding chapters. You need to know what the Bible says as a whole. You need to know what the Bible talks about because it has a message. It's one thing to, to read what the words say and it's another thing to understand what it says. Okay, the Bible says something. Do you know what it says?